and welcome to ODSC India. Ooh, the mic just kicked down. Uh, great to see so many people here. Room is packed. Um, Prashal, thank you for a wonderful keynote. I think it was very appropriate, um, given your connection to ODSC, which I'll talk a little bit about later, that you introduced uh, this morning's keynote. Sorry, that you um, conducted this morning's keynote, rather to say. So I've got to say for myself, it's um, wonderful to see so many of you back here again. This is ODSC's second event, and for myself, I have to say, it's wonderful to be here. Last year was my first time in India ever. I gotta say, it's a fantastic country. Um, it was a lifelong ambition to get here. I got to see Delhi last year, I got to see Agra, a few other places, so hopefully um, this time I'll get to explore a little more Bangalore. Last year was so busy that I didn't get out, get to go out much. Um, but this year I definitely plan to change that. Um, I want to thank Naresh and his team here, DT and everyone else, for a hugely successful event last year and building uh, this one up. Um, and last year, you know, I just want to take about, I'm only going to take about 10 minutes, but one thing that um, struck me last year when I was here was like how vibrant and how passionate the, the data science community here in India is. And, you know, it really made me think that um, data science really is a, a global community because before India, we're kind of very focused on the US and, and Europe, uh, where I'm from. So I want to tell you a little bit about that. But first um, and foremost, I want to thank all the uh, wonderful ODSC India speakers. Um, these are the men and women whose contribution is their passion, their drive is really moving data science forward. So we have a wonderful lineup for you over the next two days. Um, you've already heard from one great speaker, and there's many more to come. And, uh, you know, we've got uh, many speakers from different countries as well, not just for here from India, so I want to thank uh, especially those who travel from uh, near and far. And we are very grateful for their insights. Um, ODSC is, uh, even though I'm Irish myself, and we have a very international team, um, is based out of Boston, so we really cannot take any credit for this event. Um, as I said earlier, this, uh, pretty much this whole event has to go down to, uh, the thanks has to go to Naresh, um, especially his organization committee and his speaker committee. And I have to say, um, I've been especially impressed with their res relentless drive to make this a better event and make sure that the content that you do receive is of the highest caliber. And that's one of the things I'm really glad we partnered um, with Naresh over because he's done a fantastic job on that. So really can't thank him um, enough. I would have liked, of course, to thank our sponsors, without which this event would not be possible. There's some lovely people out there in the hallway, so um, do take a chance and go speak to them. Um, you know, I know ODSC is like very much about open source data science. We love open source data science. Um, but many of you out there are building data science projects and all that good stuff, and there is a build versus buy decision. So do talk to uh, some of our sponsors and understand uh, what they're working on. I think it'd be very, very beneficial. So, as mentioned, um, ODSC kind of uh, occurred by accident about five years ago. Um, I was a budding data scientist myself and trying to get my hands around all this stuff. And uh, we started this thing called the Boston Data Festival, which turned into um, the, uh, this global event series now we call Open Data Science. So, really happy to say we've done events in Ukraine, we've done events in um, Japan and Tokyo. That was a highlight. As I said, India here last year, and uh, we're also, we do a lot of events in Boston, New York, in London, and we are spreading to Brazil for the first time. So, what is ODSC? So, there's two things we really emphasize. First and foremost, as you well know, it's building your skills. All of you here are on your data science journey, right? I'm not sure which part of your journey on. You may be just beginning your data science journey. You may be what we call citizen data scientists, you may be career switchers, um, but you're very much here for building your skills. But I really want to emphasize in the next few minutes how important it is to build your network, okay? Now, on the um, tool side, like I've, I've been an engineer for the last 30 years myself. I, I always feel sorry for us data scientists, engineers, anyone in STEM. It's just relentless. Like, um, I thought when I, learned, when I learned Java 20 years ago, I was it, I was done. I was a Java architect, I was certified. 
Then along came R. I had to learn R. Then along came Python. Then I heard about this new thing called Julia. So it's, <laughs> it's never ending. Um, and you see these polls, it's always writing things like, you know, TensorFlow came out of, out of nowhere three years ago. Now you have PyTorch, now you have Keras. And, you know, I do realize there's a lot of pressure on us, on this group, to pursue those skills. Um, you see a lot of these polls. They want, employers want the latest and greatest tools. They also want the um, core skills. So this is a poll from Katie Nuggets, uh, regression, decision trees, clustering, visualization, random forest. You know, the skill list goes on. So when you're a data scientist or an AI engineer or a data engineer, with whatever we're calling ourselves these days, it's, it's a relentless pursuit of skills. And um, not to mention this open source data science ecosystem that ODSC is very passionate about. Um, you know, I'm, I'm very assured, I don't know what's coming next, but I will tell you that this ecosystem will continue to um, grow and evolve. And thus, the demands on skills will keep evolving. And thus, the reason for ODSC, we're a skills conference, right? I always say that. We're not a data science conference. We're a skills conference. Uh, so wherever those skills come from. And um, this is a favorite quote of mine. And uh, you know, certain tools, I apologize in advance. But I think especially you know, if you're in your 20s, you, you may believe that you're going to learn. Your next skill is the last one. You're going to learn it. That's it. I'm done. But um, what you'll find is, uh, you know, think about AutoML that came out a couple of years ago. A lot of data scientists were getting worried that AutoML is going to replace your job. It's going to do everything well. Turns out that AutoML is just a productivity tool. It's just one more tool that you have to learn. So, you know, maybe some black box vendors will like you think that you're going to buy one thing, turn the keys, and that's it. And you're all done. But trust me, um, there is no omnicompetent tool out there. There's no master key. And really, the master key is continuing to learn yourself. So ODSC is very much about skills. But let's talk a little bit about hard skills versus soft skills, right? So um, any of you guys fans of these movies taken? You know, Lee Nielsen, yeah? You know, um, I want to get a t-shirt like this made. You know, listen very carefully. I have data science skills, you know? <laughs> I kind of think you, you guys are, it's very matchy. You're kind of like Liam Nielsen. Like, you know when you, when you talk to somebody and they're like, especially out, somebody outside of tech, right? They're like, what do you do? You say, I'm a data scientist. And they're like, ah, there's a slight pause. And they're like, what does a data scientist do? So trust me, like, especially people outside of this world, they're very, they're in awe of your skills. They're very inspired for that. So let's remember that, but we shouldn't put skills at the expense of everything else. What ODSC is very much about is about building your network. I want to tell you why this is important. Um, it's not about joining a golf club and improving your swing. I don't know if any of you play golf. I play golf at least, at least once every two years. Pretty terrible. So we're not going to talk about that kind of networking and the drinks kind of networking. Um, I've, I have a firm belief in this. And it kind of goes back to the founding ideas for ODSC. And that is, you know, data science is code plus math, right? You need some kind of languages, R or Python or something like that, or Julia. And you need some math skills, be it statistics, discrete math, stochastic calculus. But at the end of the day, like what makes you a data scientist? Lots of things, right? Every single one of you got a different answer to this. But data science is really those skills plus collaboration. And think about that. Uh, for sure, I'll just give a, a, a great example. University of Maryland, I think it was, he was working with. But the most impactful AI, let's use that word interchangeably, AI and data science, comes from collaboration. And collaboration comes from networking, right? So think of the rise of the AI labs. Now, you know, when we started ODSC five years ago, there were very few AI labs out there. Now there are many, many more. And you actually have a few great ones here in India. I know IBM Research is here. Microsoft Research is here. Um, you have the Indian Institute of Science and Machine Learning, um, their special interest group. You have OpenAI. 
um, just got a billion dollars last week for working a lot of stuff from SoftBank. And some of these are academic labs and some are industry, but if you think about, you know, just take a step back and we all use the research. I'm sure as data scientists, you're downloading the research continuously. Um, I'm sure a lot of you are using uh, some of the tools that come out of AI and other labs. Um, but all these labs are about collaboration. And if you want to advance your career, like don't just think about continuous growth on this hard, the hard skill side. Think about the collaboration side. Because um, much of what is important is coming from this. Think of AI for good, right? Um, you may think AI for good is something auxiliary to your career in data science. But trust me, um, I was, uh, lived through the financial crisis when um, we were, I, was a quant, I was doing quant finance. People didn't understand quant finance. They didn't understand the bond markets. And that turned out very, very badly. You have the same thing with data science. Um, you guys have some very, very powerful tools in your hand. You really need to understand you know, what are the impacts of these. So you've seen in the last month alone, just in the last month, that um, a couple of entities had to take down their facial recognition database um, because of privacy, issue, privacy issues. The last couple of years, um, we've had to do a lot of work on making sure that AI is fair and unbiased. Because even at the companies you work at now or work in the future, you know, if, you, if you're not aware of what's going on in data science and AI from an ethical standpoint, you could be, could be putting your whole company at risk. So that's something um, to think very carefully about. And, um, but a lot, of the good, a lot of the AI for good institutes out there, they really come from collaboration. So my point is um, you have to think about collaborating to grow your career. Don't just think about being at the office, growing your skills, and working your own project. You've got this fantastic skill set that can pretty much, it's up to you to whatever you want to do with it. But trust me, like one of the keys to leveraging that skill set is collaboration. Um, and I want to give you the best example I have of collaboration. You know, think of open source data science, open, these open source toolkits, whether it's on the language side, the, um, some of the new deep learning frameworks coming out. These were all the results of collaboration. So if you want to grow your career, if you want to increase your skills, I would encourage you and uh, applaud you if you actually took part in some of these uh, open source data science uh, projects. They're very, very um, impactful and also excellent experience for you. So um, on my trip to, in to India here last year, I think back then we had about uh, 10 meetups going around the world. But it really drove home to me the fact that networking collaboration is very key. So since um, India, we've actually growing our, grown our meetup, um, the number of meetups we have from something like, I think it was 12, and now we have 54 across the world. Again, you know, we don't do, do these for our own benefits. We don't have any sponsors. We fund them ourselves. Um, anyone want to sponsor a meetup, let me know. Uh, you know, we, we spend a lot of money on pizza every month. <laughs> um, and that was the result of coming here to India. It made me understand that data science is global and collaboration is key. And if ODSC wants to be impactful, then we have to do just be more than a skills conference. We have to be kind of a collaboration network conference. Um, I'll give you one last example of this. Um, Rochelle actually uh, was, was studying at MIT in Boston. Um, he introduced me to Naresh. And uh, Naresh got in touch, and this is how ODSC India came about. So a, a direct result of collaboration. And Naresh, I've got to say, man, you're, you're a famous conference guy. Don't you have a better picture than the selfie you took at the beach five years ago? You know, you, you're going to have to um, get one of the uh, photographers aside for you as well. So, you know, you guys know what a neural net is, right? Think about neural nets. So, you know, just last parting thought. Sorry this is very long-winded about what ODSC is, but... You know, build your, think about it, build your network as you build your skills. Um, you have a fantastic opportunity to connect with some very, very smart people here who are the speakers. You also have a fantastic opportunity to connect with your fellow attendees because I'm telling you, I know you may go to conferences or may not go to conferences. When I was in engineering, I never went to conferences. I went to skills training, that was it. But you will learn so much by talking to your fellow attendee. What are they working on? What are they doing? What are they passionate about? 
But don't forget, like outside of this, connect with your community. Hey, this will, trust me, this will build your career. This will build your future. So I want to leave you with that. Thank you very much. All right, thanks, Seamus. Uh, sorry, we didn't really introduce Seamus, but I, I assume by now everyone knows uh, he's uh, the original founder of the ODAC conference, and it's an honor to have him Thank here again, with us. Are you guys having a good time so far? Worth coming in early? Not really. All right, I'm going to just quickly take uh, 10 to 15 minutes. Uh, I need to run you through some important updates that you need to know in terms of what's going to happen the, over the next two days, some logistics so that you need to be aware of. And uh, in case you need any kind of assistance or help, who do you reach out to and so forth. Uh, just for the guys who like to stand in the back, that's cool, but there are a lot of chairs here in the front if you want to come and grab. So please come in. So as you may be aware, we kicked off the conference yesterday. Uh, we started with uh, four pre-conference workshops. Uh, fantastic, about 110 people spent the entire day kind of deep diving into a specific topic. Uh, we also did uh, uh, like a Kickstarter day uh, yesterday, which was, I believe, well received, about 60 people in the room, uh, really kind of starting their understanding of what data science uh, and AI is all for. Uh, and then today and tomorrow is the main conference. We're going to be having four tracks. I'm going to talk about that a little bit. And then tomorrow, uh, on, on Saturday, we have, that's 10th August, we have post-conference workshops. Uh, again, if you're looking for kind of deep dive into topics, then that's available. Uh, I know Shemu's talk uh, quite a bit about networking. Uh, so one of the things we like to do at uh, any of our events that you've been before is uh, you know, kind of kickstart the networking here right now so that you can kind of continue that. Just a quick show of hands, how many people have been to any event that we've organized before ODSC or, uh, or other conferences that we run? Okay, so not a lot of people, which is good. So there's, there's new people that uh, you'll see how we run the conference. There's something I believe different in the way we run the conference and we kind of talk about that a, a little bit. But first, I want to do a little bit of a self-organizing activity. So what I would request everyone is to please stand up and then try and find uh, people with these roles. So form groups of uh, 10 people where you have uh, these roles, these uh, you know, uh, people wearing blue or other kinds of random things that we put up. It was generated by an AI program, so. <laughs> All right, please stand up. It's time to kind of uh, get the energy back. If any group is done, you can start screaming, yelling, whatever, just to grab my attention. Don't hang out with your own company people. <laughs> Any group? We have a group over there? All right, awesome. So first group over there. Any other groups? Are you guys done? You have all the 10 roles? Kind of. <laughs> Fantastic.
All right. Thank you, everyone. Please take your seats. That was good. Did you see suddenly the energy in the room went up? So you bring really smart people together and you know kind of let them kind of self-organize. You see people really doing interesting things. So anyway, the, the reason why we kind of did this exercise is to just highlight the diversity of people in this room, which is kind of really interesting. Uh, we have people here uh, from 336 different companies. Uh, which is quite fascinating in terms of the number of companies out here. Uh, and I'm quite happy to say that this year we have 874 people at the conference. Uh, overall, we kind of went from four, 554. Shemus was like, next year we need to double. I'm like, no, 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 <laughs> not double, but this is, this is good enough. Uh, so you will see that there is people from very d different companies out here, and it would be great for you to continue this networking through the next two days. Right? How many people are with me in terms of continuing the networking, talking to other people, trying to see what they're going to get out of interaction? Awesome. We have people from 15 countries here. So again, a quick exercise. Uh, if you can just stand up wherever you are. If you have uh, traveled for less than 10 kilometer radius from the hotel, then please sit down. How about 25 kilometer radius? All right, 50, 50 kilometer radius. That should cover pretty much the whole Bangalore. So is this fair to say that you guys, the rest of you who are standing up are not from Bangalore? That's pretty awesome. So how about uh, people from India, if you can just sit down? I see some people who are standing up. <laughs> All right, so thanks to these guys who've traveled from far to come here and be part of this conference. Appreciate that. I think Shemu's already talked about the speakers. So we have 84 speakers at this conference from seven countries. Uh, one of the things we kind of try to track is uh, in terms of the gender diversity in the speakers. Uh, so we're kind of uh, not very happy uh, that we only have 17% uh, women speakers, something we really want to fix. So we appreciate everyone who's here. Maybe next year you can come in and submit a proposal and be part of the speaker panel. We would really appreciate that. Uh, you know, that's, that's again very important for us. So that's kind of uh, the, the 74, 84 speakers we have. Uh, now one other thing that is important to understand is how this ODSE conference comes together. Uh, I'm not sure how many of you know what all happened before we got till this stage, right? So I want to just give you a quick two-minute walkthrough so that people understand how these conferences come together. So December last year, uh, we announced the call for proposals. So this is an open uh, call for proposal where we ask, hey, you know, we're going to be holding ODSE conference in August. If you'd like to present at the conference, please submit a proposal. And in the spirit of being open, the submissions are open. It's not like you send an email somewhere. It's, it's all online. Anyone can see what the submissions have come in. So as you can see, we got 208 proposals that came in. Uh, and then uh, we had a program committee uh, that kind of from different companies uh, trying to work together to shortlist some of these proposals that came in. There's a round of uh, you know, feedback that happens before we shortlist the speakers. And then we uh, zeroed in on 70 proposals out of the 208. So about one in three proposals that came in, uh, one got selected, right? That's again, uh, and it took, I don't know, six months, maybe over six months, we kind of uh, did that. Because all of us work as volunteers. This is not our daytime job. We all have daytime jobs. And then, uh, you know, late nights, weekends, we try and work on trying to shortlist, provide the feedback, and, you know, come to that. So when we look at it, we hope that out of the 208 proposals that came in, uh, when we have shortlisted 70 down, uh, you know, we've really tried our best to kind of pick the best uh, proposals that we think uh, you know, is good. 
does not mean the rest of them were not good. It's, it's more to say that what will form a coherent program uh, for, for, for this conference. And we also try to kind of look at, you know, a, a good mix of different kinds of sessions. So they're not all talks, you know, we have workshops, we have, you know, uh, other kinds of experience reports, we have case studies. So we try and give a good mix of different kinds of sessions to kind of give a holistic perspective. Uh, so again, uh, it's, a, it's a long process that happens over a period of time, but we try and keep it open and transparent and we encourage, uh, you know, anybody to come in and help uh, be part of the program committee. It's open for anybody to come and participate. So again, in spirit of being open and collaborative, we kind of keep it open uh, as a platform, right? So that's a little bit of gist in terms of what happened till this stage in terms of the selection process. Uh, so once, once uh, I shut up, right, then we're going to break for coffee and we're going to split this hall into two hall and we're going to split into four tracks after this. So we have four parallel tracks that are going to be happening. Uh, I hope everyone's looked at the schedule, you know which talk you want to go to. Uh, we encourage people to kind of, uh, you know, mark on the schedule which session you're going. It helps us plan you know, which halls people will be going to depending on the demand for the sessions. Uh, but anyway, so right now we have four tracks. So this hall here, right here, is going to be track number one, right, the first track. The dividers are going to come in and the hall that side, where the rest of the folks are, that hall is going to be track number two. So that's Grand Ballroom two. This is Grand Ballroom one. And then track number three, you go out of the hall and all the way to the end, uh, you know, there's a room called Jupiter. So that's the track number three over there. And track number four, as soon as you go out of this door straight next to the restrooms, there's a room called Neptune. Uh, so that's track number four, right? So everyone's fam clear with the four tracks that we have? All right, awesome. One of the things that we like to believe that we are different and we really want to encourage is the law of two feet. How many people are familiar with the law of two feet? people who attended our previous conference mostly. Uh, so the law of two feet is simple, that if you find yourself in a session where you're not adding value or getting value, what do you do? You look for the feedback form, but unfortunately there are no feedback forms in your kits. Right? So instead what you do is you use your two feet and you find, take yourself to another session where you will add value or get value. Actually, I was lying that we only have four tracks. We actually have five tracks. And the fifth track is right outside here, which is what we call is the hallway track, right? Which is a free-flowing track, and that's usually where you will find the best discussions or learning happening, in my opinion. So, you know, there are five tracks, four in the halls, and one outside in the hallway, right? Uh, I'm hoping everyone's got the app. Uh, the app allows you to rate the sessions. The app allows you to look at the schedule, gives you a reminder, uh, a bunch of things. You can look at who else is attending the session. You can contact other attendees through this. So if you've not got the app, there are, uh, you know, small posters right outside each door, which allows you to get the app. Uh, get the app, rate the sessions. That really helps us understand how each session was received and that feedback can then be incorporated in the next year's planning so that we can see which sessions were well received, what topics were popular. So once you get the app, you can mark it, but you can also go on to this uh, each session. So as, uh, as and when the time comes, it'll basically show you an icon where you can rate the session. Uh, it'll show you a little star. Uh, if you don't want to download the app, you don't want to install the app, that's fine. There is a web version for this, so you can do the same thing on the web. Uh, it works on the mobile as well. So you go to skdsked.link uh, slash ODSC, and you should be able to see the web view of this. Again, in the web view, you would be able to rate the session. So when you click on the star, uh, you would be able to rate uh, any given session, provide some feedback if you like. Again, I want to just reiterate that this is extremely important for us. Uh, so please, please do uh, rate the sessions that you're attending. Uh, good, bad, ugly, whatever, give your honest feedback. It helps us improve uh, based on your feedback, all right? Clear so far? Uh, Seamus already thanked the sponsors. The one thing that we really want to highlight is it's not just the financial support these guys provide. They actually help us with, uh, you know, a lot of networking, a lot of connections, helping promote the conference. It's a lot of, uh, you know, it's a really true community kind of a thing. If you see 
our conferences don't actually offer a lot to the sponsors, you know, and, and I'll say this here, right? Like, our, you know, one of the things that a lot of uh, sponsors come to us is like, I'm sponsoring, so I need a keynote. And you probably would have seen that a lot of conferences that does happen, right? There are, there's a keynote because there's somebody sponsoring the conference. Both the keynotes that we have this year and even last year that we had, none of them were sponsors. None of them are, you know, sponsored talks. Uh, because we believe that people are paying money and coming here because they want to hear uh, true insights from practitioners, from, from leaders like, uh, uh, you know, uh, Viral, who's kind of leading some of these things. Or tomorrow we'll have Grant Sanderson, uh, you know, who's uh, been doing a lot of interesting work. So people want to listen from practitioners, want to listen from thought leaders. Uh, and so we try and, you know, not mix, as I say, the, the church and the state, right? We don't, we don't mix the two things. Uh, so we don't offer a lot to the sponsors, so please do make sure you stop by and thank them for still supporting the conference in spite of not really getting a lot out of this. This is more of them just, you know, being, you know, thankful to being part of the community. So, you know, please do stop by and thank them for being, they're just outside here. I hope everyone reads email, but I know most people don't. Uh, so I do put the Wi-Fi password here in case you've not got the Wi-Fi password. Uh, that's the Wi-Fi password for you. Uh, ODSC is the network, and then uh, the SS, SSID, and hash ODSC India is the password. Uh, can I have the volunteers uh, quickly stand up, uh, just so that we know if things are not working well, who to kind of go grab hold of? So that's the group of volunteers. I believe you have a white cap with you, so you know that's that's a way to recognize the the volunteers. So these guys will be in different rooms. If you need any help, uh, please uh, you know, uh, reach out to them. So again, thank you guys for volunteering and helping us run this event smoothly, All right? Uh, the program committee, do we have everyone in the program committee here? I know Dennis is not here, unfortunately. She couldn't make it, who's the conference uh, program chair. Uh, but can I have the rest of the program committee please quickly stand up? I think there's a good overlap here between the folks. So. Yep, a couple of folks. So if you're not happy with the program, <laughs> you know who to <laughs> grab hold of. All right, with that, I will shut up and I will let you enjoy the conference. There's coffee tea that's going to be served right now outside the halls. Uh, so I would request everyone to please vacate the halls. We're going to be dividing these halls. And then we will start again at 11 o'clock. All right, thank you.